Hey, traders, this is Blake Marr with Trader Summit. And with me today, I have Jim Welsh of Macro Tides. Jim, it's Friday. I've got you here. And I hope you're going to give us some market updates. What's happening with you? Uh, absolutely. Uh, well, it's Friday. That's what's happening. And that means tomorrow is Saturday. So that, That's correct. This is all true. Yeah. But you know what? What else? Well, let, let's talk a little bit about the markets here because, yeah. you know, just it's Friday. Moves are getting a little crazy. Maybe we're... I don't think we're anywhere near the end of month just yet, but end of week, people taking some profits. But let's talk about last week when we were discussing the S and P. You thought we'd uh, we'd seen the highs. I, I didn't. I get. Yeah. I gained from last week that you 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 didn't feel we were going to hit new highs. Today we brushed an all time high with the S and P, but we have quickly reversed course. So what are your thoughts right now? I mean, you know, we, we overexceeded what you thought was going to yep. happen. We're seeing a little bit of reversal. Should we believe it? Or do you think we're going to a new all-time highs? <laughs> uh, well, hey, I'm glad you brought it up. Because when we were talking, I made a comment that I had taken a partial small position when the S&P got to 4470. The reason why that was small and partial, well, first of all, we were looking for 4480. There was retracement and other numbers that came in that I discussed in Monday's weekly technical review. At the same time, I fully understood that, hey, this thing could just keep pushing with an outside chance. I did not think it was a high probability that the S&P could get near the prior high at 45.45. Uh, on Wednesday, when the S&P was trading at 45.30, I sent out a, a special update to my subscribers saying, now is the time to take a short position a 33% short position in the S&P. Uh, at that time, uh, SH, which is the non-levered uh, inverse S&P ETF, was trading at 14.44. So I, I think this reversal is going to continue to play itself out, uh, Blake. I, I believe still that we're going to see a decline that takes the S&P below 42.70 to kind of complete the correction that began from the early September high. Well, let me, uh, if, if this is, okay, let's talk technicals for a second. You have the yeah. S&Ps that really rejected the move at the highs today. Will you view this as a false breakout just because we probed? I mean, it was within what, what maybe five intraday points on the S&P, uh, but you yeah. know, I look around at other markets like the NASDAQ still stuck well below yeah. the previous lows. You got Russell 2000 still in a big range. I mean, all markets right. aren't created equal, right? That's correct. And those to me are really important clues that you just cited because over the last week, you know, the NASDAQ has had a pretty good move, but it's below its September high. So you have intermarket divergences showing up between what was the leading index for many, many, many months the NASDAQ 100 failing to make a new high. Yes, the S&P did. And at the same time, the Russell is probably three to 4% below its prior high. Yeah. So again, the table is set. Now you need things to cause selling. And the thing I've pointed out is my take was companies would likely report good earnings, but they're going to start talking about supply shortages, wage costs, and all the issues that we all know about but yeah. they're going to dampen, if you will, expectations for the fourth quarter and first quarter. Forget the banks. They're not tied to the real economy. But companies like Whirlpool are, and they're saying, hey, this shortage is going to last well into next year. This, the stock sold off 4% yesterday after the close, and they reported good numbers. But they threw a wet blanket on it, which is exactly what I think is going to progressively happen in coming weeks as we get more cyclical stocks coming in with good numbers. But hey, we're dealing with these problems and it's going to hurt us in the next one or two quarters. Okay, yeah, earnings. I mean, stocks care about earnings. Obviously, that's, that's probably number one, right? Number one, right. <laughs> number one. Uh, but also, you know, today we had Fed Chairman Powell. He, he's, he's, he's basically, he's, he's kind of like, uh, well, he says a couple of things. Now is no <laughs> time to raise rates. However, now's the time to start tapering. So the market's queuing into the tapering, obviously yeah. today, so with higher rates, maybe this, this could really have an impact on the NASDAQ tech stocks that have been sure. really thriving in a low rate environment, right? The higher yeah. the high beta ones. I'm going to take kind of the uh, opposite side here because, okay. uh, you know, we'll see. Um, 
A, they're definitely tapering as I've been writing. I, you know, months ago I was talking 15 billion when everybody else was 10 billion, that they would definitely do the number November 3rd meeting. We all know that that's what's happening. I think there's a chance that they may go 20 billion. Whoa. Instead of 15. How's the market, how's the market going to take that? Not good. Okay. Okay. I think the, the equity market would not take that well. So for sure, in my opinion, they're going to go 15 billion. Um, it, it, the, the, that would be a surprise. I think, again, counterintuitively, if the Fed does ramp up to 20 billion on their purchases instead of 15, uh, I think treasury yields are going to come down. Really? Because, and I think what? this is an opportunity that the Fed, why they may do it is they've kind of lost some inflation credibility here in the last few months, especially. Inflation wasn't transitory, much hotter than expected, lasting longer than expected. So it's kind of almost gratuitous. Do 20 billion is, oh, wow, you guys are really inflation hawks. It's not going to materially change and have a big impact on the economy. Yeah. Um, and I think that is the aspect that the treasury market may take. Oh, look at the Fed. You know, they're putting their big boy pants on. They're serious about it. You can get yields down. At the same time, the stock market has been feeding off of liquidity. And now the Fed is going to pull it back. Yeah. So either way, I think that concept works. And I think that's another reason why you could see lower yields and a, a pullback in the equity market. Got it. Okay. Well, let's talk one last thing. Um, yep. I, I got to talk a little price action in gold because this morning, uh, this morning, I'm speaking on Friday. This is Friday. Uh, yeah. October 22nd, uh, in North American morning, we had a rip up in gold. Gold looked like it was going to break out. It broke 1800. I think it got a lot of people in. And by the way, just so everybody knows, I'm not trading gold at the moment, but obviously it right. impacts the currency market. So I watch it very carefully. Right. Gold's above 1800. And then all of a sudden it gets slammed right back down to the lows, pretty much the lows of the session. What do you make of this price action in gold? It's still struggling to get above even 1800. This is the way it's been trading, very choppy, especially, you know, rallying and then fading. Well, that does one thing. It keeps a lot of people from getting too bullish. Uh, so there is that positive aspect. Yeah. As you know, a number of weeks ago, I recommended buying gold under 1730 in anticipation of a move over 1800 up towards 1825.35. So we didn't quite get there this morning. I still think that is possible and likely, but, you know, it's easy. You're long under 1730. You raise your stop to like 1755, 1760. The recent lows over the last four or five days, um, and then you wait to see if that indeed plays out. Gold responded to Powell's comments. That simple. Like, yeah. oh my! And so here's a testament of what I'm talking about: how bond yields may come down just on the prospects. Oh, definitely the Fed's going to taper. They want to be done by mid next year, which means 15 billion a month. And gold immediately reacts negative, or, you know, oh my goodness, you know, they're going to be tightening. I think that's an overreaction on gold's part, but I just think that that's the psychology shift. And I noted this three weeks ago when Powell testified before Congress, he never once used the word transitory, and he acknowledged at that point in time, it was going to last longer. And that was one of the reasons why I thought gold would rally from 1700 or under 1730 to above 1800 and ideally get up near 1830. I think that story is intact, but you know, you got to use stops because things change. Yeah, sure. Okay. Well, I appreciate your update on gold. Now, one last thing I wanted to ask you, you got the dollar, uh, dollars, you know, pullbacks are shallow. I, I mean, we're, we can't even get be below the 38% retracement of the September lows to the, uh, to the October highs, which, you know, when you, when you're trading and you have very shallow retracements, what does that tell you? Well, there's underlying strength. Yeah. You know, as we've talked, I, I thought uh, the dollar was making a, an important low late May, early June, th and that potentially is headed up to 100. OK, uh, this area that you noted last week, 9450 to 95 is big time resistance. Yeah. My expectation was, hey, it was a little overextended. People started to get a little too bullish the dollar. It was going to have a pullback. I think that pullback is going to take it below the 38 uh, percent retracement. Okay. Down near 93-ish. And then I think there's going to be another move up. And the whole thing was predicated, uh, Blake, on the idea that the Fed was going to be moving to less accommodation with monetary policy than the ECB and the euro's 57% of the dollar index. One of the things that's helped the euro uh, or helped the dollar, pardon me, is weakness in the euro 
because of what's going on with COVID, what's going on with energy over there. You know, prices are going through the roof. And so their economy is being impacted and will be impacted uh, by what's happening with energy, which means ECB is going to be that much more uh, slow in terms of moving to less accommodation. Those are the reasons why I felt the dollar made the low and was going to, again, potentially make a move up toward 100 over the next year. All, right. All of that is intact. Good. Okay. So the well, fighting of shallow pullbacks ties in with the idea, hey, the major trend in the dollar has turned up. And for whatever reason, people are being forced to buy dollars or in this case, sell euros. All right, Jim. Well, that's good to hear for those that are dollar bulls. If you're a dollar bear, maybe not so kind of words. But I, I want to say, uh, Jim, uh, it's, it's, it's nice to know that you're updating uh, your, your newsletter, folks. Even as, right. as the market develops, you, you send in-between messages out to, out to your, your, uh, your subscribers. So let me ask you this. If I'm a trader at home, I want to know more about what Jim does. How do I find you? Uh, Macrotides.com or send me an email, jimwelshmacro at gmail. That's and I'll Welsh, get you whatever Welsh information you want. Welsh with okay. an S-H. Not, not like the grape juice. <laughs> I only I wish. Uh, no, W-E-L-S-H. And the story was like that when ancestors came over to this country, they changed it from Walsh, which was obviously Irish, to Welsh to try to hide that a little bit. I'm no. not sure the brogue then fulfilled that, but anyway, they tried, supposedly. <laughs> I, you know, you look more Asian than Irish. I'm joking. I'm totally joking. Anyway. Hey. You're going to get canceled. You and Dave Chappelle, man. Those kind of comments. <laughs> well, I'm Asian. I'm, a, I'm actually Asian, so I can say it. <laughs> so there. Yes, you can. <laughs> All right, Jim. Hey, uh, enough about that. I want to say thank you so much for joining us on a Friday. Sure. I will see you hopefully next Friday as well. And thanks for spending your time with us. And remember, guys and gals, it uh, you can give us a thumbs up, subscribe if you like to see yep more of Jim's content. It is free. Find out more about Jim down below in the description below. Thank you for joining us once again. Hey, have a great weekend, you and everybody else, and a great week for everybody who tunes in All right, on man. Sunday. Thanks, Jim. Have a great one.